There's a very interesting textual connection between the beginning and the end of this week's Torah portion. The Parsha, Shalach, begins with the story of the spies, the Meraglim, who head out to check out the land of Israel, but who come back, at least 10 of the 12 of them come back, with a terrible report suggesting that the Jews won't be able to conquer the land even with God on their side. The verb that's used to describe their spying out or heading out to spy out the land is the same verb that later appears in different form at the end of the portion in connection with the mitzvah of tzitzis, tzitzit, the fringes the Jewish men are commanded to wear on the corners of a four-cornered garment. In this context, the verb is used to tell us not to spy after or stray after our hearts and our eyes. As the shadow used to like to say, Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? And our eyes are prone to seeing things, especially when the weather gets warmer, that could perhaps lead to inappropriate thoughts. But if instead we look at the fringes that sits on our garments, we'll think of the commandments, we'll think of God up in heaven, and that will restrain us from sinning. We gained this precious mitzvah from an event that occurred in the life of the patriarch, our forefather, Abraham, Avraham. Avraham's nephew Lot was captured in a war, and Avraham went to battle and he rescued him. And when he rescued him and he vanquished the initial conquering armies, he also rescued certain kings who had been defeated in the initial war. One of those kings, ironically, was the king of the wicked nation of Sodom. And as was Avraham's right, the king of Sodom offered to Avraham the war riches as the new conqueror. And Avraham said to him, I won't take anything, not even a thread or a shoelace from you, because I don't want you to be able to say that you were the person that made me wealthy. As tempting as it was to take all that wealth, Avraham didn't want to take any chance of having any connection to the wicked nation or the wicked king of Sodom. And because of the restraint that he showed, he gained the merit that his descendants, we Jewish men, would have this precious mitzvah of tzitzes to help us restrain ourselves. If you want an example, an extremely colorful example, of how tzitzes can help us in that regard, the Talmud provides one. There was a young man who was very careful about wearing his tzitzes, but he wasn't quite as careful about other commandments. He heard about a beautiful, famous, non-Jewish woman of ill repute who charged a staggering sum for her services, 400 gold coins. He collected those coins, sent it to her as payment, and scheduled an appointment to go see her. When he arrived, he found her resplendent on top of six beds festooned with silver, and then a seventh golden bed on top of that with silver ladders connecting them, and he started climbing the ladders to get to her. When suddenly, the fringes that sits from his garment hit him in the face, and he changed his mind, and he went back down the ladder. She quickly went down the ladders after him, and she said, I'm not going to let you leave until you tell me what flaw you saw in me. He said, I didn't see any flaw. You're the most beautiful woman I have ever seen in my life. So she said, then what's the problem? Why'd you change your mind? He said, well, I'm Jewish, and God gave us to my people the Torah. And in the Torah, there's a command to wear tzitzes, fringes, on our garment. And twice in connection with that command, the Torah says, I am the Lord your God. God's telling us, in the first instance, he's going to keep track if we sin. And in the second instance, he's telling us, if we don't sin, he'll give us tremendous reward. So I've decided to restrain myself and not to sin. She said, I want to know your name, the city you're from, the teacher that taught you the Torah, and the academy at which you learned it. He wrote that all down, and he gave it to her, and he left. And she had such a religious epiphany from this event that she traveled, found that academy, found the rabbi in charge, told him the story, convinced him as to her sincerity that she wanted to become a part of the Jewish people. And he converted her. And after converting, she ended up marrying that young man. So guys, I can't make you any promises, but it does seem like the Talmud is suggesting that if you wear tzitzes, which is so easy, They come in all different weights these days, including very lightweight. Once you put them on, you don't even feel you're wearing them, and people don't even notice it, especially if you tuck in the fringes. If you wear those tzitzes, not only will they help restrain you from sin, not only will you gain tremendous reward in heaven, but you might even find your wildest dreams coming true.